Today, we're going to focus on the key learnings of, um, of this in respect of the African continent and specifically South Africa. Uh, about 10% of the respondents, respondents were from South Africa. Um, and again, we will be doing this, uh, this uh, C-suite barometer annually. I think it's uh, really, it's given us some key insights and I think that's uh, really valuable to us. And we'd like to see how, how this changes over time, especially as we deal through this pandemic and uh, the global uncertainty at the moment. So our key finding number one, uh, relates to Africa and short-term investment. So I think this is um, quite a big finding for us. Um, all the regions surveyed in the report by Mazars, and this includes Asia Pacific, Western Europe, Latin America, and the US, are moving from short-term oriented corporate strategy and business development plans to longer-term oriented ones. All of them except Africa. And I think this is, um, this is something that really was um, was very big to us. And uh, the top three short-term investment objectives for African businesses are the immediate financing issues, efficiency and reducing costs, and people and team management. So I just want to um, maybe elaborate a bit on these. And I think we've seen it with many of the clients and many of the businesses in South Africa where um, the immediate financing issues as a result of the lockdown. And I think we all know that uh, we had one of the strictest lockdowns uh, in the world, you know, and it led to many uh, companies going to financial institutions, ensuring they had enough runway to deal with the lockdown. And at the time, you know, we were told 21 days, it's gone much longer, and we're still in some sort of lockdown a year and a half later. So really was shoring up that um, the financing of the businesses. Uh, the second one was uh, dealing with efficiency and reducing costs. So a lot of the businesses have obviously put a lot of their projects that were on the back burner um, into action. I think the efficiency uh, reaction has really come out and we've seen a lot of our companies um, change, uh, identify new ways of working, and of course, reducing costs. We've seen obviously travel costs have gone down, utilities have gone down, but really managing that cost base. And then the third big uh, short-term investment objective was around people and team management. So as you know, unfortunately, uh, this has resulted in significant retrenchments. Um, I think we've heard some of the numbers were close to 2 million jobs that were lost. Uh, some of that has come back. But I think it, at this point in Africa, it was really focusing on survival. And uh, that's really where uh, the survey has has given the idea of what, what uh, C-suite uh, businesses were looking at. So the C-suite, more than 54%. So that's more than half of the South African respondents were focusing on investing time, money, and resources in the short-term concerns. So... I mean that's um, I think that's quite huge for for um, for the survey results to point out. I think the theme that's come out of it is that you know in the short term we need to survive as uh, as businesses, but in the long term it needs to be a plan to thrive. Um, we saw businesses change their business models. We saw them try to accommodate remote working, lower the cost base, uh, manage working capital better and improve efficiencies. And all of these are survival needs. We need to, we've seen the most successful businesses, however, being the ones that were able to adapt to change. The ones that were able to um, change the business models and have a long-term growth mindset. And I think you would have seen that in some of the results of the companies that have come out in this new year. The companies that, that have adapted to change have fared the best. And I think that is something that's uh, a message uh, to all the African uh, companies in the continent. The second key finding relates to Africa is poised for growth. So this is quite uh, an interesting um, result. 
Uh, 77% of Africa's C-suite expect to grow in 2021. And this is the second highest amongst all regions surveyed. I think Latin America was the only one that was um, that, that was higher than that. And it was, this is also above the global average of 71%. So despite the pandemic, leaders were generally optimistic. We knew that South African economy was re, would rebound from the point of recession. I think growth was an expectation. I think we all knew that. I think what did surprise us was how quickly the rebound has happened and how quickly our, our economy has grown, especially in South Africa. And the rebound has been much better than expected due to driven by mining, technology and the finance sectors. We saw at the end of the day that some businesses were much less impacted than by COVID than expected. Again, I think a lot of it relates to business savvy, as I talked about. Then I think the resilience and optimism of uh, South African entrepreneurs really has, I think, pay, played a big part in this. And another key finding, South African business leaders are concerned about the state of the economy. Um, and I think this is not really a big uh, surprise to us. Um, the result of load shedding, uh, which still impacts us, the impact of the lockdown, um, which has obviously decimated many industries, but I suppose also the uncertainty about further lockdowns. You know, that's also um, driven a lot of uncertainty um, in terms of business leaders. Um, the other big factor was the huge unemployment rate that has been as that has come out as a result of of the issues that we've had, and we've seen that in the recent unrest uh, in the country. And you know, inequality really is a big issue for us, and it's a big issue for us as South Africans. Um, and I do believe, you know, it is the responsibility of all of us, private sector and government, uh, to do something about this. At Mazars, we've embedded youth employment as part of our firm strategic objectives. Um, we have set up a data analytics school um, whereby we are able to create employment and at the same time, we're able to deliver innovative solutions to our client base in a remote way. And I think this is the way our world is changing to. Okay, so our third finding was in relation to um, tech so there's an urgent need for tech preparedness globally and within South Africa. So 81% of Africa's C-suites expect that the biggest transformation in the coming years will be tech-related. And I don't really think that's necessarily so much of a surprise, and it was definitely in line with the, the global findings, where 50% expect their businesses to go through technology transformations. However, while globally the business execs expect to be able to respond to these trends in technology and innovation, Africa has not um, digitally transformed as quickly as other developed and developing regions. And we're definitely still behind the curve. Um, if you look at um, the survey, 30% of South African survey predict that there is more than a 75% likelihood that the organization will go through a tech transformation during the next three to five years. Um, and then 45% of South African respondents predict that there is a 50 to 75% likelihood of a tech transformation. So the findings clearly demonstrate that there's a high likelihood of transformation, but it doesn't really appear to us that South Africa is necessarily ready. Um, according to research from the Institute of the Management Development's World Competitiveness yearbook, uh, which measures the capacity and readiness of economies to adopt to digital technology. South Africa was ranked number 62 out of 64 economies, so we're right at the bottom of the pack. Um, number 63 and 64 were Argentina and Venezuela. So I suppose the question um, really is, is, you know, how likely are we to see this transformation? Um, what will it look like and how will it happen? So maybe just a little bit of perspective on that um, from, from us. Um, we believe that it's really crucial to fit your technology with your strategy and your business objectives. Um, we've seen people just going along the road and doing what their competitors are doing. And that's not necessarily always in the best interest, especially in our economy in South Africa where money is tight. 
um, and you don't necessarily want to waste money. As Amit mentioned, you've seen um, you know, efficiency as being the key um, to, to where we want to go. So really only to invest in the tools um, that are right for your business and match your business needs. Um, they, as I said, there can be a tendency to follow others, but really, really need to focus on what, finding out what works first um, before going into that. But innovation is key. So we're still seeing, as you heard, what we're doing in, in terms of innovation. Innovation remains absolutely critical, especially when it comes to new products and services and using technology to enhance those. So in, in terms of how we use technology daily, um, I suppose many businesses didn't really think that they were ready um, before COVID. But COVID really did teach people a lot. Um, and we've seen South African businesses successfully work remotely. And when I say work remotely, I think we're not just talking about working. We're talking about how you then look at how you service your, your customers. How do you focus on doing things differently? Um, and I think it's really just the beginning for us. Um, I think you can expect to see a lot more advancement in technology. I think there's things happening in the background that we're not aware of. And I think it will also be very much aligned to a focus on customer service. So the customer experience and customer service needs to be at the top in terms of whatever technology you bring into your business. Um, and I definitely think that from the discussions we've had with our clients who, who are across a broad range of sectors within South Africa, this is definitely true. Um, we at Mazars ourselves have been working closer together with our global counterparts um, and specifically due to this pandemic. And we're starting to deliver new services and products using the technology that we have. We also know that Africa has many active tech hubs. Um, I think that Nigeria and South Africa are probably the most uh, the leaders in terms of these hubs. And although these hubs have traditionally acted as incubators for startups, we're now starting to see much more use of these hubs to promote the use of technology for, for businesses um, within various sectors of the economy. We have skills in the market. Um, we've seen that as we've worked with the Yes program. There's plenty of people out there unemployed who don't have um, access to jobs. So there's a huge opportunity to, to, to get well, well skilled and trained individuals to help with this global shift because this is definitely an opportunity for South Africa and Africa. If we look at um, our fourth finding, um, and this is our, our last one that we want to cover with you, it's related to the cult cultural transformation. Um, this survey was uh, early during um, COVID. So a third of South Africans survey predicted a 75% likelihood that the organization will go through a cultural transformation in the next three to five years. 40% um, of South Africans felt that there was a 50 to 75% likelihood of, of cultural transformation in the next three to five years. So you can see that, again, we anticipating change. Um, I think that we'll find now, um, as we've gone further into COVID, that there's even more likelihood of this. Diversity and inclusion is definitely sitting at the top of the agenda for many businesses. This is what we're seeing for ourselves. How do you make sure that your organization is suited for all individuals? Um, once you get this right, then the business works better and performs better. Um, so that's really important for, for, for inclusion. Um, we made this one of our key focus areas in our business. Um, and I think that we've seen the ability of people now to adapt to changes improved. You know, transformation only comes when people come along with you and, and are ready for change. Uncertainty that has been created by COVID has really created an opportunity for change to be something that we can do on a, on a larger scale and, and more effectively. So operating out of your comfort zone has definitely become um, more the norm. Um, and then in terms of the company culture, we've seen that businesses need to realize that you can't use the same management style you used before. Um, you've got to really look at your style. Um, with hybrid working in the future, you can't just ensure that your culture thrives when people are physically present. You need to find ways to ensure that your culture will thrive when you aren't physically present. And that is something that we've, we've really had to deal with over this, this period. So the, the last part of our transformation um, is in terms of women leadership. Um, women leadership is still lagging behind in Africa. 86% 86, 86 of businesses have a male majority of decision makers, making Africa the second least gender equal region in the world. 